Picture this, you're in the 1990s and reading big headlines that there's something called the internet that will connect people from all over the world in real time. Mind-blowing miracle, right? Now fast forward to 2022 and you're WhatsApping a video to your friend about a dog who just farted. How do we get to here? With some real high-tech crazy scientist inventions, of course, just like the latest on the block, edge computing. The basics of edge computing. Nope, we're not talking about Microsoft Edge at all. Tech experts would already know about edge computing. For our non-technical viewers, let us explain it a little bit. In easy words, we promise. Without bombarding you with any technical jargon, edge computing is the practice of capturing, processing, and analyzing data near where it is created. The edge devices do this without the need for the data to be transported to another server. In the words of the Red Hat Chief Technology Strategist E.G. Naden, edge computing brings the data and the computing nearest to the point of interaction. This type of data processing can take place in any number of ways and in a variety of settings. Edge computing is already in use all around us, from the wearable on your wrist to the safety monitoring of oil rigs, streaming video optimization, and drone-enabled crop management. Let's have an example to understand this better. Imagine you need to monitor high-security equipment on your factory floor with a video camera that sends live footage. Now, if there's one camera sending footage across the network, things go smoothly. But multiply this by hundreds or thousands of devices. Not only will quality suffer due to latency, but the cost and bandwidth can be huge. Edge computing helps solve this problem by being a local source of processing and storage for many of these systems. An edge gateway can process data from an edge device like a sensor, security camera, or smartphone, and then send only the relevant data back through the cloud, decreasing bandwidth needs. We hope you're able to understand this by now. What does the future look like for edge computing? If we say it this way, edge computing is the future. It has already found its way into Microsoft's new projects. The aviation industry is investing in edge technology to enable data transmission even in midair. The healthcare industry is expecting life-changing capabilities like monitoring patients' vitals and responses, even in emergencies. Edge computing can even make independent decisions to balance ground moisture with available water resources. That's groundbreaking. We have nothing against cloud computing. After all, everyone has used it for years. Edge computing is not here to replace cloud computing in any way, except it will now be used as a smart utility by organizations to process time-sensitive information. Picture this scenario. You have a self-driving car that's exploring the sand dunes of the Sahara. If that car is based on a cloud computing system and somehow fails to connect in that remote area when it needs to make a critical decision, don't you think you would be stranded there? Network speeds can be trusted most of the time, but most of the time is isn't good enough for stuff like automatic driving, medical gadgets, and natural disaster response tools, as there are people and organizations at risk. With advanced networks like 5G and artificial intelligence stepping into our lives, edge computing is only going to open up a new world for some seriously futuristic possibilities. Don't be surprised, there's no full stop in the tech world. The current research about edge computing. Research is always the backbone for advancements, and the one we're going to discuss in this video today Today is about edge computing, its current challenges, and what the future looks like for it. Before you start yawning, let us tell you that you might already be using some of the great outcomes of this technology. So pay some respect, dude. The research was conducted by Schneider Electric, a French multinational company for energy and digital automation solutions. The white paper titled Succeeding at Digital First Connected Operations included responses from almost 100 IT professionals all over the world, from industrial, healthcare, education, and other verticals. They belong to organizations in the United States, China, Japan, Germany, the UK, India, and Ireland. The white paper asked the firms about the reasons to invest in edge computing. 50% said to improve cybersecurity, and 44% said it's for systems resiliency and reliability. Yet, there are some advantages these organizations have faced with their edge deployments. Not everything is easy. Almost 32% of respondents have experienced slow connectivity issues and 31% have faced a power outage or power surge for more than a minute. So we need to overcome the current challenges first in order to move forward. As most of the local operations are directly supported remotely through the connected edge, reliability and physical and cybersecurity are some other concerns as well. Also, the workforce needs to have the right skill set to execute across technology settings. This will require companies to engage with new ecosystem partners inside and 
outside of their organization. The white paper also highlighted how organizations could future-proof edge capabilities. Problems mean solutions. And the purpose of this study was to carve out the challenges that could be controlled for edge computing to grow bigger and better in the future. This step is important to support the transition of organizations to digital-first connected operations. To overcome connectivity issues, companies should invest in sustainable power resources, and not just after getting face-to-face -face with power outages. They should include secure connectivity resources early in the edge planning phases and reduce the risk of downtime. If firms are using edge technology for remote monitoring on a larger scale, they should make sure that their workforce has the right skills to manage all that. Companies can also consider trusted partners to provide industry best practices in situations where it is not economically or physically feasible. These service partners can predict issues even before they occur. While theoretically they may sound like easy solutions, practically they would involve a lot of planning, communicating, and of course spending. But hey, you've got to lose something to gain something. Other related news. Let's have a look at some other technology news as well. Yik Yak app is exposing its users' exact locations. As we weren't over the Facebook data breach yet, there's another app that's being accused of privacy breaches, and that's Yik Yak. The name carries some similarity to TikTok, but who are we to judge? The app was first launched in 2013 and got quite popular on college campuses for gossiping, sharing updates, and bullying online. Seems a lot like the early days of Facebook, right? It was shut down in 2017 because it failed to moderate the content. Last year, it again rose from the dead and surpassed 2 million users in November. A researcher named David Tether analyzed the app's data and was able to access precise GPS coordinates of where posts and comments came from, accurate within 10 to 15 feet. Though Yik Yak promises anonymity, Tether pointed out that combining GPS coordinates and user IDs could reveal users and find out where people live as the chances are that many are using it from home and the data is accurate to within 10 to 15 feet. That combination of information could be used to stalk people. Tether also said that the risk could be higher for people living in rural areas, where homes are more than 10 to 15 feet apart because a GPS location could narrow a user down to one address. That's scary. Apple is testing iPhones with Type-C charging port. Apple is testing iPhones for changing the lightning port with USB-C, but you shouldn't expect to see it in this year's iPhone lineup as the transition wouldn't happen until 2023 at the earliest. The switch would be a big one, though it's not a complete surprise. Apple has already moved the iPad Pro, iPad Air, and iPad Mini to USB-C. Earlier, the EU presented a proposal in September that would require many devices to include USB-C ports. This legislation might be a key reason for Apple's move to consider the change. There are also technical benefits to using a USB-C as it offers faster transfer speeds. So, a change for good. There are also rumors about Apple developing a portless iPhone. Imagine how it would be charged. Maybe from the tears we shed looking at the cost of those iPhones. WhatsApp has introduced emoji reactions to messages. You might have got this feature by now if you had updated the app. Now, forget those days of dropping OK, good, and such meaningless words to end conversations. Now you can simply give a thumbs up to a message and boom, you're done with the chat. Previously, this feature was available on Messenger, Telegram, and Instagram, but thankfully WhatsApp has jumped the bandwagon as well. Currently, there are only six emoji reactions available with no option to add a custom reaction. But remember, Facebook also grew from having only a like button. You can add an emoji reaction by long pressing any message. And that's a wrap for this video. So what do you think about about the new research about edge computing. Do let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button for more videos like this. See you in the next one.